Okay, hello and welcome to episode 34 of Dano Says So. My guest today is somebody I initially met in 1998 in a very small space doing even smaller bands and sweating our asses off. Brad Logan is a well-traveled musician um, in California and around the world. A uh, longtime member of, of Leftover Crack. When he and I met, he was doing heavy, heavy work in F minus. Um, I loved what he did in, with Rats in the Wall. Uh, you know, I believe you're still doing you're still doing time with the adolescents, yeah? Correct. Yeah. So you are you you are all over the map, my friend. He was also a, a label head with Black Noise Records. Um, he's a very traveled stagehand. Uh, the availability of exciting conversation is kind of a cup run of over situation today. So, Brad Logan, thank you for doing this. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me. And yeah, and I want to you know apologize off the top for my beard cliche. You know, I mean, uh, the COVID beard, you know, that I've, I've fallen victim to. Um, I think if there's ever a time to grow a beard, this is certainly it, right? Who are we primping for? Well, I will tell you a couple of things. I shaved more than two inches of mine off Monday. And it was it was when I saw the episode that dropped, dropped Monday. And I was like, yeah, you're trying to hide the absence of a chin that you developed during COVID. But you just look like a fool. <laughs> You know, so I took the I took the clippers out and just you know took off what I could. I didn't razor shave. Yeah, but, you know. Uh, yeah. So equally guilty. So. Yeah, I think you look great with a beard. And and you know, <laughs> that said, I'm never entirely clean shaven. I always have like a stubble of some sort. So now I just have like a, a more of a stubble. You know, well, I'm, I'm telling myself it photographs well, but in person it looks like about sixteen loosely associated hairs. So you know. <laughs> Um, well, that's enough about our grooming for the kids. Um, last time you and I talked, we talked fairly serious, fairly, fairly personal matters, but just on a bench at a show at Suburban Clampdown, which was this big outdoor black flag led thing, right? Indeed. Just weeks before that, we took the same stage in Santa Cruz. Um, my band played with, with your band, The Adolescents, and with, with, with several other bands, but it's like this whole traveling end to end on the state, playing all sorts of all sorts of venues, all sorts of crazy things going on. And at least for me, one of the more exciting years I'd ever had during music. And then it had stopped. Like, how was that for you? Uh, well, I'll tell you, um, uh, you know, for me, it's been, um, you know, it, it's been a great year. 2020 really? was yeah, 2020 for me was um, uh, just what the doctor ordered, you know, for me personally. And, and you know, I know it was a very tragic year uh, for a lot of people, you know, and, and I know a lot of people are still suffering, uh, you know, as a result of it. And, I, and I'm not trying to, um, uh, you know, um, downplay any of that or disrespect any of that, um, you know, uh, for me personally, um, you know, I've been, and you have too, I mean, I've been out, you know, touring in the fucking trenches for a, a long time. And, and, uh, um, you know, I was getting my ass handed to me, you know, really? physically, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know, um, uh, you know, it's not like I'm touring around in a bus and getting out and, you know, getting on stage after the tech set up my shit, you know, and right. thank you, you know, it's like, you know, fucking get in the van, you know, and, and, you know, we could be playing anywhere from, um, you know, uh, a literal, you know, uh, uh, kitchen somewhere to, you know, um, a club in Santa Cruz to, you know, a festival or whatever. And, and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's hard work, man. It's exhausting, you know? Uh, so I, I think that for my own sanity, um, I had probably needed some time off for a long time. And, and, uh, because I'm insane, I just lacked the ability to, to do that, to ever step away and, and, you know, to set any sort of boundaries for myself of like, okay, you know, I should really rest up, you know, I'm starting to lose my mind. And, and, and so the pandemic did for me what I couldn't do for myself you know, which was put the brakes on. That's and pretty uh, self -aware. <laughs> I didn't realize it until I was, you know, in it. Right. Pretty and, self aware uh, with hindsight. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just like, whoa, you know, this is like, you, you know, um, so foreign to me, you know, just stopping and, and, um, 
and, and then, you know, I was able to, um, it afforded me the, the time to, um, uh, to, you know, embark on these, um, you know, musical projects and, and uh, writing projects I wanted to do for a fucking long time, you know, but never had the time to do. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's an interesting thing to wonder about. So, you know, I interview a lot of musicians on here. I try to, you know, balance it. But at the end of the day, I know more rockers than I do any other kind of people, right? Indeed. But a lot of people, myself included, and I'm thinking right now of, of a conversation I had with Scott Hill from Fu Manchu and a conversation I had with Timmy Chunk, so I think we both know. Um, yeah, love Timmy. And they both sat there and thought they would write 100 songs this year and have barely written any. You sound like you went in the other direction. Well. I'm obsessive compulsive to the nth degree, Dan. And, okay. and uh, um, you know, I, I, uh, um, I'm in multiple bands, uh, you know, and so I, I started writing for, for those, you know, all of those bands. And then mm -hmm. um, uh, I became involved in projects, you know, uh, I learned how to use garage band, right. I didn't know how to use any of those, like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, pro tools or any of that stuff. Right. Garage band was like, you know, to, um, came on the fucking computer, you know, and, and, uh, here it is. So I, I learned how to do that and how to send files back and forth and, you know, started guesting on people's like, you know, COVID jams and, and, uh, uh even started a project with a friend of mine in, in, uh, uh, Bristol, England, you know, and a friend, you know, a, a friend of mine in Portland and a friend of mine in Bristol and, and myself, you know, um, and we have about 14 songs of, of that, uh, um, sort of, um, Electro meets discharge madness. Uh, my friend Gabba from the band Chaos UK, okay. and and uh, um, and, and you know, I just became driven. You know, um, uh, and and I learned from you know from my wife how to. Um, she's a painter, and uh, um, how to just write. Uh, you know, just keep um, pushing ahead. You know, writer's block, no problem. Write a bunch of fucking garbage. Keep going. You know, and and, and just like just stick. Is that is writing. that is that a necessity? I'll interrupt you because I'll tell you the story. That's a common thing amongst writers, and I know you've written professionally. You know, we we've actually done things some things for the same publication. Yeah, but I've never been able to that adhere. You know, get your thousand words a day. Keep the muscles sharp. Keep 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 the instrument tuned in. I go long stretches without it, and then when I sit back down, sometimes that enables me to chip gold. But you find you find that you benefit from forcing the work, even when it's even when it's maybe not coming naturally. Or I, I find that I have to force the work, yeah. Um, because because by nature I'm a lazy sod, so I have to work against that. You know, like right. knowing that about myself, that it's like um, that I could very easily just do nothing for the rest of my life, you know, at all, and just sit in a room and be cool with that. Um, <laughs> if I ever want to get things done, I have to work against that. And, okay. and so maybe I've, maybe I've taken it too far, you know, but this is, I think this is a case where, you know, I was able to turn one of my liabilities into an asset. It's like, well, I'm obsessive compulsive. And if I apply it to this, um, it doesn't make uh, churning out garbage, you know, or what I perceive as garbage, at least any easier, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm able to, um, uh, you know, sort of look the other way on it. And, and, you know, I would do these like, um, rounds of things it's like okay i'm working on you know three different song ideas simultaneously for three different bands and then i started a journal and then i started a lyric journal and uh so i would just go back and forth between all of them you know like and, and so maybe you know one day it's like oh the you know the lyric journal entry oh this is kind of cool but the music stuff isn't happening and then it'll flip-flop you know then then it'll be a period of like uh you know these lyrics are garbage but i'm just going to keep writing them anyways but the music's really like I'm hitting on some stuff that I really like there. And, um, uh, and it, you know, I was able to stay in it that way. And, and, uh, um, you know, not that it was, it, it, it's more often than not a struggle. There's, you know, the tip of the iceberg is stuff that I write that I really like. And the rest of it's just like, uh, this is, you know, fucking bullshit. Why am I doing this? But just keep showing up, you know? Right. Does that make well, any sense? You no, know, it absolutely does. And it and it and it begs a number of different questions. I want to include it's leading me somewhere, which has to do with the notion of staving off real work 
or having ended up, no, having up intentionally or otherwise, you know, created a life that's largely dependent on punk rock or at least on, on the arts, right? Yes. Um, a part of that that I intended to get to before we get there, but you, you really just teed it up beautifully. You also, you've also done a ton of work as, for lack of a better word, a stagehand or as mm. a member of road crew for, you know, all kinds of, I could spend as much time listing the bands you've worked for as the bands you've been in, you know, with Social Distortion, with Rancid, with countless others. Indeed. That's never appealed to me. I've never been able to do it. It makes me think that that's my narcissistic side speaking, that I could never find myself passionate or engaged enough to watch somebody else play every single night. Sure. First off, did, was that ever an issue or did it just help your creativity? And then, like I said, do you think all of this bands ad infinitum, year-long year -long activity, going out as a stagehand and everything else, did it protect you from or leave you unprepared for doing like real grown-up work when it was necessary? You know, in other words, paying the bill in very bills in very mundane fashion. It's kind of a two-part uh, question. Yeah, yeah. Uh uh, well, I'll tackle the, uh, you know, part one, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I started, um, uh, uh, guess, I guess being road crew uh, and working, in, you know, first came working in production. Um, I had disappeared off the face of the planet for an extended period, you know, between the late 80s and the early 90s. Um, and when I resurfaced, um, you know, I started, I had some friends who, you know, worked um uh, at Golden Voice, you know, and and uh, and they started throwing throwing me some work as a hand, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, and I mean, I immediately loved it because that's my environment, right? Is being like at a gig, man, or at a show, and and right. uh, I started going to concerts when I was literally ten years old, you know, mm -hmm. and and uh, um, so I'm like this is work. This is, I can't believe this is work. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I'm getting paid to do what I would just do anyways. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I didn't, um, you know, train to be road crew, uh, you know, I, other than I knew how to tune a guitar and string a guitar. Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember I'd been become friendly with, uh, you know, Rancid's road crew through, you know, doing shows with them. And, and they just, you know, they asked me one day, like, Hey, you know, we need a guitar tech. Is that something you'd be into doing? And I was like, oh, yeah, I love that band. That'd be great, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so to me, working on that end of it, like I had, uh, you know, um, I had nothing respect, nothing but respect for Rancid, and I loved the band, even though I didn't know them. And, yeah. and Social Distortion, like I knew, you know, those guys from, from growing up with them, but, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I had nothing but respect for them. So it was like, oh, you know, any way I can help out, you know, I, I, I um, uh, I didn't ever expect to play music ever again. Really? Right. When I, yeah. When I started doing that, I was like, yeah, I'm done. You know, I'd played in some, some bands in the eighties and stuff. And, and, uh, and, and I thought, you know, <clears throat> that's cool, you know, and we're just going to leave that in the past. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I was happy to tune guitars for the rest of my life. And, and uh, it was actually Tim uh, from Rancid who kind of like, uh, forced me <laughs> into uh, you know making music again you know mm -hmm. and uh um you know having conversations with him and uh you know we became uh, quite close through touring and, and and hanging out together you know he's like man you know you should really start playing music again and, and uh and at first i was really reluctant and and uh then i did you know i bought a guitar and and uh um you know uh um you know that, that, that came out of that. i was gonna say was that the immediate outshoot of it yeah 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 okay, so this is around yeah. the time we met or a little or a few yes. years after yeah okay yeah a few years after um so uh um you know and i, and I found that to be like um a, you know the perfect thing to do uh to support my um to support my ass is, is a, you know, uh, a musician or whatever, you know, and I use that term loosely, but, you know, it's like a band guy, right? right. It's like, um, you know, and I think any job that I've done in the last 20 years was to, con to, con to continue to be self-supporting of, mm -hmm. of, you know, my, my um, artistic output. And I use the term artistic very loosely, but, you know, my, you, you know, my musical output. Right. Um, so, uh, and it afforded me flexibility, you know, and, and uh, I, you know, I've had many an office job, 
you know, and, and when I was a kid, had many a retail job, work at record stores, you know, worked every shit job you can imagine, you know, just like straight out of like, you know, the janitor, um, parking lot attendant. Uh, well, that's, that's this whole groove that I think is common for, for punk rock musicians, particularly in their 20s. Yeah. And I kind of came to this heartbreaking space where I think it was in 98 and 99. Um, in fact, that it was, was it a Bakersfield or a Fresno trip that we did together? Um, that F minus uh, speak thing. And yeah. like a pizza part of the that was, I think, the beginning of a tour for us. And part of a summer that yeah. became two back to back US tours and a European tour for the band I was in, right? Between each of those, I work a shit yeah. job. I'd read meters for the gas company or whatever, right? But at the end of that, <laughs> and with those guys moving back to the towns they were from and everything else, I was pushing 30 or coming right up on 30. And it was the first time in my life I realized I had to prioritize the nine to five and the bill payer ahead of, in other words, I looked at, I, I you know, yellow patterned it and making music my primary focus, at least from a survival standpoint, was no longer tenable. And that was, you know, within, within two years, I, I had learned to run bars. But you seem as we're walking distance from each other's ages to have successfully avoided that crossroads. You ever worry that that won't always be the case? Or? I guess that's been the name of the game, right? How to right. avoid having, getting a real job for mm -hmm. until I hopefully drop dead walking, you know, to the grocery store or whatever. Well, I wish you luck. On that's my, dead, sir. <laughs> that's the, that's my retirement plan okay. is just dropping dead, you know, right. um, and I apologize for the long winded question, but we did get where I was at it. So go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, please, you know, um, feel free to keep me on topic. If I, if I meander off, no, I that tend, wasn't it. Tend, tend to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I, I've, um, yes, I, I have, I do worry about that. And I have worried about that. Like, Oh man, I've just fucked up my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, um, you know, I'd, I, I would see my friends who had like nine to fives and, you know, a, a house and in a car and, you know, whatever that, that, you know, sort of like whatever dream that is and just be like, oh man, you know, um, uh, maybe I should have done that, uh, because, you know, living, um, you know, between shit jobs and on the road is like, um, you know, man, that's a struggle, <laughs> it's a struggle, right? And it doesn't get any easier the older you get. Um, but I figure at this point, it's it's like, you know, there's no turning back, right? I mean, there was no turning back a while ago, but especially at this point, it's like, you know, where am I going to get a job? You know, and I tried. There would be times in between tours where I would go into like Starbucks or whatever and take them a real resume of the things that I had done. And they would look at me like I was a fucking crazy person, you know, like, and I just fabricated some, you know, like, yes, you know, and, and they're like, there's, you know, you're fucking totally unemployable, my friend. Yeah. You're you're like, at a, yeah at this point, like Mr. Totally Mr. Logan, this is fascinating, but it's not a skill set. Yeah. Right. Right. And, you know, uh, like <clears throat> at this point, it's like, what, you know, oh yeah. Hey, I was wondering if I could, um, you know, get the next like uh, five weeks off because I have this tour to do, you know, like, that's just not going to happen. Right. Um, so, so I, you know, I think in order for me to, 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 to like, um, you know, go find a job and immerse myself in, in that sort of thing. Um, you know, I'd have to completely leave everything else behind, right. you know, and, and, uh, because to me, like the, the, you know, the touring and, and, um, you know, uh, the writing and the recording and all of the madness is just a part of it, you know, uh, I have, a, you know, there are a couple of artists, you know, that, that, who I think have a really good situation, like, uh, uh, what's his name from Dark Throne? Do you know the, the singer Fenris of Dark Throne, you yeah. know, like works in, works in a, you know, one of the, like, uh, um, I don't know if you're in a black metal or not, but they're like one of the, you know, uh, heavies, OGs of, of black metal. And, you know, guy works in a post office, man. And Dark Throne just puts records out and, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he does his, you know, he's in multiple side bands and, and um you know he's kind of he, he has a really good situation you know but i guess you can do that when you're like one of the inventors of black metal or something you know well it, it, it it'll it's interesting 
um, when you and I were kids, right? Yeah. There was almost no creative class that could do that, at least in the punk rock sphere. Now there, are, now there are plenty of career musicians. Yes. You're somebody. You're somebody who has worked for and with some of them, who is in some acts that can play some pretty large rooms, pretty you know, on consecutive nights. Um, and you're a you know, you're a backed up against the drums basement player too, you know, but as likely to turn up at pro- playing a program skate, you know, over the last several years, as as a person is to run into you in Vegas during PRP. Does totally. one of those things strike you as the more true punk rock or in a less corny sense? Does one of those things just strike you? Do you have any internal debate between art and commerce? Because you're exposed to the polar extremes and mixing the two. Um, I also just want to add, in case anybody from Dark Drums is listening, I really love your band. And uh, I, I hope I got the story right. Right. I don't know any of that band and it's just, you know, I phrased say, that last question urban. with you know, I phrased that last question with no with no judgment. I've been, you know, I've seen plenty of both up close. You've, you know, worked the circles in both mad reps for decades. So I mean, it's an important to me, perspective. Yeah, to me, I don't see any difference between uh, you know, um playing program or playing uh um somebody's living room or playing, you know, the main stage at, at PRB. It's like it's all the same thing. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and I would put the same amount of, of, uh, um, uh, of my heart into, uh, to any of those things, you know, mm-hmm. I've played some of the best shows I've ever played were in front of three people, you know, and, and, he, you know, recently, right. Not in the beginning, but it's just like, it, it just doesn't even matter. And, and, um, you know, I think that, um, uh, you know, I think it's, it, you know, it's, it just depends the, the sometimes, um, uh, you know, I mean, there's pros and cons to both, right. If I wanted to complain, but, you know, um, uh, um, I don't, you know, really like complaining about it. And, uh, um, there are musicians who will get a taste of one and completely divorce the other. In other words, you know, they will, they will, they will get, they will get a certain amount of mileage and a certain amount of exposure to something and it is such a thrill they're like you know i don't ever want to keep keep playing the same rooms to the same 20 people right i can't relate to that because to me they're very they're they're different animals in terms of the experience and I'm i'm a hopeless i'm a hopeless junkie for the immediacy and i'm a spectator at the grand spectacle but my heart is playing both i can i can relate to what you're saying but it's, and, you're one of the few. You're one of the few people I know who seems to have equal appetite for both. I, I do, and I agree with with you know what you just said. I mean, at heart, I'm a you know uh, I'm a spectator, man, and I'm a, and I'm, I'm a music fan, you know. So, um, um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I I think that uh, for me, if I ever lose you know sight of of um, you know, like I still go to like you know, by myself to like DIY shows, man, mm-hmm. warehouse shows, uh, you know, house shows, um, uh, to me, those are, are, um, are, are, uh, you know, um, it's important to keep my foot in, in what's real and what's right. going on, you know? And, and I think if you lose sight of that, you're fucking dead, man. You know, um, it could so, be argued that, sorry, I cut you off. Go on. Uh, oh no, go on. It could be argued that one space is more political or at least more conducive. To being extremely political, but like say some but like leftover crack straddles, you know, and you seem to me an extremely political person. So it has to have, or at least your music would suggest that it must have been a ripe year psychologically for you, 2020. You know, I mean the world was on fire. The world was on fire, you know. Oh yeah. 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 I mean <laughs> the, if there was you know, ever you know, there's just so much to write about, you know what I mean? If there was ever a time to just, you know, with an endless supply of fuel of of things to to talk about and sing about and write about, you know, um, you know, absolutely. Especially Mm -hmm. all the, you know, the things that have gone on and, you know, the political landscape here in in the U S it's like, you know, I don't want to get into that right now because we'd be here for, you know, two, three fucking hours. Right. Right. (laughs) That two hour hour podcast, I swear I'd never do. Yes. Yes. We'll, we'll be realized. Um, 
um you know and and uh um yeah i you know i think that that there's definitely um you know in the smaller spaces and in the diy spaces are are um you know are more politically active and and you know um you know that's where that stuff happens at right not to say that that um you know i haven't played some some bigger shows and some festivals where that went on too but um uh i think that leftover crack you know started um uh you know we started doing bigger shows and festivals because um you know and i was just writing about this the other day i, I did an interview um at a certain point we wanted to start doing shows that people could actually come to and see the show without fear of getting arrested or the cops breaking it up and, and shutting a club down or finding a club you know what these I mean? All, these and, all seem, seem admirable pursuits to me, yes. I mean, they would take it out on the kids, right? They would take it out on the kids in the clubs. Okay. And, and uh, you know, we didn't have a problem if they had a problem with us. You know, that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, you know, and, uh, um, you know, and I mean, I love festivals. I love, you know, the overload and, and just, you know, all the, you know, being able to like um, see, you know, 10 bands in a day and, and uh, um, you know, um, it's just the insanity of those things uh too you know but uh um i love it all and i see it it all a part of the same thing you know and it's like um you know if you're a musician man i mean you just like you know you just you play wherever you know you play wherever the calling is right it's like i'm not too good for, i'm not too good for any of that kind of stuff you know because in the at the end of the day i like playing music you know the music is everything that's the only thing that matters is the fucking music sure. you know the the festival or you know the you know all of the you know all of the things surrounding it or the business end none of that stuff means shit man it's it's the music and it's the connection you have with with the people that are there at the show and i know you know this you know and and so um you know I, i'm a I'm addicted to those connections, man. Mm -hmm. I really, really am. Likewise, the, 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 the year without it has been God fucking off. You know. Yeah, sure. But yeah. there's but there's been other ways, right? There's been other that's, ways that's, to have that's why what we're doing here today exists. Like this the, this this little show was my was one of my primary pathways to sanity over the last, you know, ever since last July. See, this this would probably wouldn't have happened if if we hadn't been shut down. It absolutely you know? wouldn't have happened. The, the yeah. idea was born. When a kid was interviewing me, I was looking at the screen and looking at how simple it was. And it was the first time I'd ever been on Zoom. And while I'm talking to this guy, the other side of my brain is thinking of the first dozen people that I could call this week and yeah. set up a string of these, you know. And yeah, and it's been huge. It's, I don't mean in terms of its viewership, it's microscopic, but in terms of its therapeutic value, it's been it's been huge. I mean, there's a lot of things that that have been born of this. A pandemic that i will be really sad to see if they if they go away mm -hmm. you know at the end of it right like like you know your show or, or or being able to um you know connect with people um you know i've been talking to my friends in other countries this whole time you know and, and have mm -hmm. like rebuilt some relationships that you know um uh that i you know picked up you know where we'd left off 15 years ago right you know what i mean and and uh um, wearing a mask, man. Fuck. Love the fucking mask. I'll wear a mask to fuck. I'll wear a mask to fucking bed. I'll wear a mask in the shower. Fucking waterboard myself, man. You know, I, I I love masks and gloves. Like sort of in the home stretch of this thing, like we'll call it, you know, the, the, the back nine of this interview. I, I want to come at you two different directions about life going forward. Yeah. And the first one, the first one um is is sort of asking you to don unearned expertise so it's more like asking you your suspicions what do you think happens to the live model going forward you know we know a lot of musicians who are dependent on the touring dollar and on the merch dollar to survive they've, or at least they've built their present tense lifestyle around it and i picture mm -hmm. the large concert like anything bigger than alex's i picture that live model being further off than people think i mean maybe i'm wrong maybe 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 because it's outdoors i'm wrong maybe a lot of different reasons but i sit there and I think, I don't know if I want to be around a thousand people anytime soon. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. I think that, that you know, we're maybe seeing some, um, some uh, you know, some of these things seem a little over optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think it's going to be a lot slower to come back. Um, 
you know, uh, than, than people think. And I also think that maybe when things do come back, um, maybe people will find that, that, uh, uh, their memories of certain things aren't as good as the reality of certain things, you know, Dude, have it's people like, not deified shows in their absence? Oh my God. The way people like, talk about them. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I watched you and your Modelo Hayes 12 rows back from me last year. You weren't religious totally. really about this shit. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. You yeah. know? So, um, yeah, I think that, that, um, it's going to crawl back, you know? And, you know, another thing that's that I, I, mean, I'm, I mean, I'm dependent on these things is, is a way of life, too. But, you know, I, I make my living through just, you know, um, various sources. Right. There's not one, you know, I, I'm like a you know a hustler, man. I have like, you know, six, seven, eight different ways that, I, that I'm able to pay the bills, you know, and and, um, and, and luckily I had some, you know, uh, I'm a, a hoarder. So I had some savings, you know, and, and was able to live off that and. and you know, I get some unemployment, it's, which is just nothing really, but I can right. survive on, on nothing. You know, I'm able to, I'm to looking get at by. the background in that room and you appear to be very space economical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so uh, um, what was the question again? Well, no, no, it, was oh. just, it was just, I wondered if you thought the same thing, that it's going to be slower coming back and you really think that live model is just immediately going to restore. I do not. You know. I do not. No, I, I absolutely don't think so. But another thing that I've, you know, that has kind of been in the front of my mind is this is all going to come back. You know, um, I've seen people panicking about it like it's never going to come back. But it's like, you know, hey, don't worry, you'll be sitting in traffic and standing in line before you know it. It'll be just like none of this ever happened. And then the home stretch thing that I wanted to ask you, and it's just really an opportunity for you to showcase, but as things loosen up or even just as things go through pressing plants or whatever, in succession, what are the what are the next few things for you? I mean, which band hits the road first? Who has a record coming next? Who do you get in the same room with and jam the soonest? Like, what what's what's the next what's the next fiscal quarter look for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Dan. Yeah. Um, I I know that that um, adolescence had uh, we had some stuff booked for the summer in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really think, you know, uh, uh, you know, I don't think Europe's coming back or, or, or you know, international travel for bands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's, you know, not just in the pandemic, but, you know, Brexit and, and you know, things that are going on in, in that well, way. I, I, yeah, I know, particularly in England. It's in, in England, you know, yeah. you know, which is a great place for shows, you know, but it's going to be. You know who knows what that's going to fucking look like, right? And and you know uh, I've played fourteen European countries and I've never played the UK at all. You've never played the not UK? a single town in any in of a your single UK country. I can't believe that. Well, sorry, sir. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, but anyway, go well, on. That was that was an irrelevant interruption. But yeah, the the the, the climate, the, it's the visa, the whole visa system, everything is different. Yeah, it's right. going to be uh, you know uh, it's going to be a while before that's even fucking sorted out. Right. You know, um, so uh, uh, yeah, we had some stuff, the adolescents had some stuff we were doing with the circle jerks and negative approach, which is like my fucking dream bill. Right. Uh, but that's been pushed to, to 22. Okay. Um, and, you know, there's there was some talk of leftover crack, um, you know, doing some stuff in the fall. And we're, and we're kind of feeling around to see, you know, Ron's kind of putting some feelers out to see how that is, is really going to look. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I'm just wrapping up a book right now um that uh an oral history of leftover crack i have a question for you is yeah. rare bird is rare bird the same imprint that's doing gary a's book yes and and he, they did sam mcfeeders um I, I, jerry asked me if i would write some jacket copy for it i was beyond honored but then when i was studying up on you i saw it again and now when you mention sam i'm like yeah i may have to start bothering you yeah sam and jerry and and uh um uh jesse michaels has some stuff out on uh, you know rare birds yeah. oh yeah yeah um actually we should talk about that after this maybe uh um uh um uh maybe i'll send you a uh a reader you know um but we're wrapping that up and uh uh you know we we're working on that uh me and my co-author who uh, is john gentilly from uh um he's the editor of that punk news website he's out of okay. philly um so we're wrapping that up 
And then uh, uh, and it, immediately after I'm start, actually I'm starting now on another book um, that I've been talking about with PM Press, um, which is, you know, uh, um, gathering up all those column pieces and, and sort of exp, uh, expanding on those, you know. Is PM, and, is PM Press still Ramsey? Uh, I believe so. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, I, t- I talked to a, a, another guy there. Okay. Um, but yeah. Um, I've got to learn uh, to shut up, but you're making me think about all these things I haven't thought about in ages. So on the one hand, thank you for that. On the other hand, I apologize. Yeah. What? No, uh, no, but, no. Yeah. Don't, don't apologize. No, I love talking to you. Um, uh, and I love, uh, uh, um, you know, jogging some of these things loose for you, right. you know. I got, a, I got a question for you. You have a solo album coming out, don't you? Or some solo music coming out. Yeah? I, I am. I'm working on some solo stuff. Uh, I've been dicking around with solo stuff the whole time. And, and you know, I started, you know, I was doing some acoustic things. And and, I'm, it, it, and after a while, it's like, you know, acoustic doesn't, it just doesn't really suit me. You know, that's just yeah. not my thing. And and uh, um, I'm fucking terrible at it, you know. And, and uh, I have friends who are really good at it, you know. And, and uh, um but I'm just not one of those people. Uh, so I'm messing around with some, um, some different things, uh, uh, um, you know, noisier sort of things, um, okay. but just one man, one man band kind of stuff. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm going to try and put out like an EP, um, uh, you know, a month starting next month on Bandcamp. you know, that um, adolescents have, we, you know, we have a, a grip of songs. Everybody's been writing, everybody in that band um, and, and just sending stuff to Tony. So we have a ton of things. Leftover Crack has, uh, you know, uh, probably two albums worth of music that we're trying to decide what to do with. Um, and then I have that thing that I'm doing with with Gabba, um, which I'm really excited about. And uh, with Gabba and, and Sarah, my friend Sarah, um, who was the singer in Detestation. Okay. And uh, um. But we don't, you know, we don't have a name for it or anything yet. But uh, I'm really excited about it. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, I got a lot of stuff on the burner. I certainly don't have time for a fucking job, man. <laughs> he see, he says to the he says to the bar manager who conducts a podcast on his Tuesday day off. You, you know, know, Dan, I would love to manage a bar. I can't get hired, man, to save my life. I would oh, fucking. Well. It's, know, it's, I, it, it sounds like more fun than it is. Um, I'm a. I'm going to resist the the urge to to debate the glories of bar and at least close my side of this with th- with this. And I didn't know this getting into the interview, but of all the people I've talked to during pandemic, it sounds to me like you have adapted the best so far. So congratulations. You are. I'll tell you. You are. So many artists have been like, basically complain complaining of pandemic induced brain freeze. It mm-hmm. is inspiring to me to see somebody who says, "No, man, pandemic kicked the doors open." Pandemic is awesome. And I'll tell you, jail taught me everything that I needed to know about doing the pandemic, you know, like, again, turning a liability into an asset. It's like when you're sitting in a cell, you know, when I was sitting in a cell, I had to come to the conclusion that I'm not going anywhere, that this is it, you know, so we're going to make the best use of our time. Jail taught me everything I need to know about dealing with the pandemic. Is the best tagline somebody's fed me on this. Since Ian McKay or Ian McKay said on here, Ian McKay said the great things, the great thing about people is that they die. That's a that, oh man, that is a good one. Well, no, you guys yeah. are naked hey, I got, now, so I congratulations. A, I have a question for you, Dan. Okay. Uh, so, when's your next book coming out? So, here's the story. Um, I'm doing a chat book for a friend. That's what I'm waiting fuck, for. Is a fucking. I'm doing a chat book for a friend who's starting a a, a, a publishing imprint. Um, he owns a bookstore in Southern California, hmm. and he's asked me to do something. But I, I usually do real books, not chat books. So I shouldn't say real, but I do very small bound books. This is um, a really short thing, 50-page thing called Songs Without Someones, right? Um, yeah. Which I'm looking forward to, and that's sort of a reference to both having no love life and having no bandmates during 2020. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. and not, not I, necessarily a bad thing, my friend. Right. And then I want to run... I want to write an analysis of what it is to do music and to do mu- new music as you're moving into your fifties. I don't know what the readership for that will be, but I've been working on it for about six months and that's called maybe baby. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to chill, Brad. I appreciate that. 
yeah, th- I, I'm looking forward to your stuff. You know, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of your writing and, and uh, um, I, I think those are great topics to, to write about. And I, I think there'll be a lot of people, a lot of people interested in reading that. Well, you haven't that. forced me to mention them in public will probably make me complete them. So thanks. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, are you good, sir? I'm good, Dan. Thanks for having me. And, and uh, um, uh, you know, uh, um, I hope to see you soon, my friend. Absolutely. This was an absolute pr- pleasure, Brad, and I'm glad we decided to do it. So, everybody, episode 34 with Brad Logan. Thank you. Thank you, Dan.